be in God's house on this Lord's day. John the Revelator was exiled to the Isle of Patmos for the testimony of the Lord. And he said, I was in the spirit of the Lord's day. I think maybe we're behind him a little bit here this morning. But he said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. You know what he did? He wrote so many great things of his divine revelation that he received that all of us holiness preachers put together hadn't got it all unraveled yet. No, we haven't. I'd like to get in the spirit this morning. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised, the city of our God and in the mountain of his holiness. Beautiful for situation is Mount Zion on the sides of the north, the city of our great king. So good to be with you again. Maybe Sister Rich will sing tonight. But so good to be with you again here at the Highway of Holiness. And Brother and Sister Collins, we want to thank this church for the help you give us. When we were here at, uh, was that September, was it? And uh, we really do appreciate it. Y'all gave us a good offering. Sister Rich and I did not take that offering and buy it up in hamburgers and hot dogs. We did use a little bit of it for that. But we paid our bills and then we put the rest, everything we have in excess, we put into the work of the Lord. Some are making CDs and annuities and all of these things. And I'm investing mine in a place that's more sure than the stock market where it cannot lose. Hallelujah. I'm in no way to lose where I'm investing mine. I'm a rich man. My last name is Rich. And I'm a rich man. And if you would call my bank in the morning, Norman, Oklahoma, uh, First Fidelity Bank, and tell them we've got a man up here by the name of Don Rich. And he's telling us he's rich. Now, they probably wouldn't do this, but we'd just like to know the balance of his account and see if he's really rich. Well, if they could tell you, they would probably say he hey, better be careful and not put one zero too many over there because it'll immediately turn a three-digit check into rubber if he puts an extra digit out there. But that's not where I'm making my deposits. They have no computer to keep uh, where I'm making my deposits. I'm laying up my treasures in heaven where moth and rust doth not corrupt and where thieves cannot break through and steal. You better realize you're just temporary here, just passing through and get involved in something that's eternal and immortal. I want to thank this church for your tape ministry because, believe it or not, it's opening up some doors for me. I was in Zurich, Switzerland, preaching the convention there, and there was uh, three ministers there from Croatia. And they said, Brother Rich, I said, yes. One of them could speak English fairly well. He said, we're so glad to meet you. And we're wanting you to come to Croatia because we love to hear you preach. And I said, well, I've never met you before. And they said, no, but uh, Brother Phillips, no. You know him down in Idabel? said, he sent us some tapes of you preaching. And they come from some place up there in Ohio called Highway of Holiness Church. And so now I've got three letters in my office with invitations to come to Croatia because these tapes are going out and people are getting the gospel. Only eternity will it reveal. Only eternity. The only complaint I had was they said you was telling a story and they cut you off and we didn't get to hear the rest of that story. We'd like for you to tell us the rest of that story. And when I told that, and they said, yeah, another one, and another one, so try to get it all on them tapes if you can. <laughs> Amen. Well, I do appreciate that. We uh, thank you for the nice room that we have that's been provided for us. I think Sister Pauline and Brother Wayne had something to do with that, and we really do appreciate that. So much better in some of the places that we stay in. And sometimes we have to sleep where it's pretty tough. I know I was over in uh, Ukraine. The only place they had me to sleep uh, was on an old couch 
that was uh, that much too short for me and had a hole this deep and the old, just the bare metal springs. That's all. And so uh, my feet had to go out over the top of it and it's cold over there. But every time I'd get dirty clothes, I'd stuff in that hole. After, after I'd been there about a week, I had that thing pretty well leveled out. And, uh, but it's so good to have good things. But you must learn not only to enjoy good things, but you must learn to endure when things are not as good as you'd like for it to be. Because consider the high priest of our profession who says birds of the air have their nests and foxes have their holes, but the Son of Man hath no place to lay his head. So we must be willing to go into all conditions. I enjoy it when I have great meals like when I go over to your house and eat in other homes that I've been in and up at Brother and Sister Collins, I enjoy that. And I really like to eat steak. I mean, just love it. But when I get over there in those countries and they cook me cabbage three times a day, I can't say I enjoy it because I don't like to smell it cooking. And it gets in your clothes and you walk out and you smell like cooked cabbage. <laughs> but you must do things like this if you're going to carry the gospel. And when you see all those souls that are coming to Jesus, what is a little suffering of the physical man if you can win souls? Just wanted to throw that in. Right now in, in Panama, we have a church under construction. That's what we're doing with uh, in missions. We have one under construction in the Ukraine. We're going to the Ukraine the 6th of March to dedicate that new church, Lord willing. We'll also be preaching in Germany, in Stuttgart, Germany, and in Zurich, Switzerland. Now, uh, in Stuttgart, Germany, I don't know how I got into that church, brother. Even my interpreter said, we don't know how you got an invitation to this place because we live here. And they won't invite us to come. And yet they've invited you to come and you talk about a building. The architectural design is beyond us. And the people are like we are sometimes. Uh, they are like orthodox, a type of orthodox and very, very silent. If you cannot preach without somebody hollering amen all the time, don't go to Germany. But the gospel has power. And when you preach the gospel, it reaches out and touches hearts. So they scheduled me for one night, and I went there for one night, and that church has five pastors. And everything's quiet. No, amen. No, I mean, everything's just precise. And I just had to get up there and preach like Brother Don Rich, and my interpreter kept saying, slow down a little bit now. Slow down a little bit. Uh, but I kept preaching. And after the service, sinners came. And some of their grandchildren who were grown people were getting saved. So the pastors called to meet me in the office. I thought, oh, I wonder what happened here. And I got in and they said, we want to ask you a few questions. And they did. Bible questions. And they said, we'd like to extend our invitation for you to stay five nights with us. So the gospel has power. And now I'm going back there, Lord willing, next month. Just want to tell you that we're trying to do something for the Lord. We don't have much time left. My hair is turning white. I'm getting slower. My steps are slower. But oh, there's such a need. You need to be praying, young person, for God to put a calling, a definite calling on your life to do something for Him. I know Brother Collins needs you here in the church, but there's a field out there somewhere. And most of the holiness churches in Oklahoma, not all of them, but most of them, have anywhere from 3 to 15. One church I was in had 17 preachers just sitting there. Oh, it's good when you can sit there. That, that way you can criticize and critique everything that's going on. You know, it's like a boxer up there boxing two boxers in the ring and 25,000 critics out there in the bleachers. Amen. But somebody's going to get their nose bashed 
but it's not those guys sitting, those spectators. But I would rather be a, a participator in the work of the Lord than a spectator. I want to preach this morning, if you'll turn with me into St. John chapter 11, a very familiar portion of Scripture. St. John chapter 11. When you have it, say amen. Bible says in verse 1, Now a certain man was sick, named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment, wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, Behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. When he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abode two days still, in the same place where he was. Isaiah chapter 55. Very familiar portions of scripture this morning. Isaiah chapter 55. The Bible says. In verses 8 and 9. God speaking. Said for my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. The first thing I must tell you this morning is that God does not operate on your schedule, neither does He operate on my schedule, but He has a schedule all His own. God is sovereign. The Bible says in Psalms 135 and 6, Whatsoever the Lord pleased, He did in heaven and in earth. Don't you think the world has got out of control from God? It seems to be a world out of control, but there's still someone sitting up on the throne who's still in control. Oh yes, and when He says enough is enough, He will stop all of this sin business that you see today but God is so sovereign so independent that many thought when they brought their needs to him and God did not just come running they thought God was a God who did not care or a God who was so busy keeping the universe the moon the stars the sun that he was not concerned with the matters of mankind but I want to tell you today that God is concerned. He invited you and I and the whole world to cast all of our care upon Him for He careth for you. But listen to me today. After we cast our cares upon Him, we must trust Him. Oh, we must learn to wait upon Him. Like the old black spiritual, he may not come when you want him to come, but he'll be there right on time. Sometimes Jesus just loves us so much that he comes late. And that's what I want to preach on today. He loved me so much that he came late. Now we want the Lord to come back on our time, on our schedule. But you see, all of us have problems. And all of our lives at times have been disrupted by problems. But you must understand that we see our lives just one moment at a time. And God sees our lives from the beginning to the ending. We can see up to the corner, but God sees around the corner. And sometimes if God gave us everything we wanted, right when we wanted it, we would really be in trouble. Oh yes, all of us have problems, but it's so different when a problem is personal. When it's someone else's problem, it doesn't bother us that much. But when it's in our house, 
when we have our own problems in our own home. We read about problems in foreign countries and they trouble us a little bit. We read about problems in our nation and we're concerned a little. We read about problems in our neighborhood, in our city, and it bothers us some. But you just wait until you have a problem right in your home. Then you'll really get down to business. If you're a praying person, you get all shook up. Oh, yes. In our text today, Lazarus, the brother of Mary and Martha, is sick. Mary and Martha have a problem right in their house. Now please understand that some folks feel if you serve God, you'll never have a problem. And there's false teaching that and many feel when tragedy strikes, it's because of a sin in a person's life. I know there's been some tragedies with some of the families in this area, but wait. That's not the case every time. Sometimes sin can bring problems. But uh, problems come many times even to the righteous and to the holy. Some of the most godly people I know have suffered the greatest in this old world. Listen to me. Some of this problem here today that I want to preach about is a problem in the house of Lazarus and Mary and Martha. Some of Jesus' most faithful followers. Jesus had visited in this home many times. He had eaten many meals here. But now there's a problem in this house. And Jesus wanted us to know what Mary he was talking about. He said it was, in, it was that Mary who anointed my feet uh, with ointment and wiped them with the hairs of her head. This problem is in this devotional woman's house. He wanted us to know that problems do come even if people are devotional, if they're supportive to the work of God, and if they love God, they still have problems listen her brother their brother Lazarus is sick I'm sure they tried prayer they had many friends in that area in the little town of Bethany and I'm sure that their friends tried to help but nothing seemed to help and taking a chance that there's no English teachers here, Lazarus just kept getting weaker and weaker and weaker and sicker and sicker and sicker. Huh? Am I right? Oh, yes, he did. And finally, they decided. Someone said, let's sin for Jesus. Now, brothers and sisters, this is the wisest decision they could have ever made. And the same applies to your situation today. When problems come your way, the best thing you can do is sin for Jesus. So they sent for the problem solver. They sent for the mountain mover. They sent for the one that says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. They told the messenger they sent. You don't even have to tell him who it is. You don't have to call no names. Just say, the one that thou lovest is sick. He'll know who you're talking about. Because the Bible said Jesus loved Lazarus very much. And of course, I must tell you, he knows us all by name. And he loves us too. So they sin for Jesus. And now here's the hard part. The waiting period starts. They've sent the message to Jesus that they needed him. Now they're waiting on Jesus to come. I'd do pretty good if he comes quickly. You know, I've pastored some of them old-fashioned churches where they didn't think you was having church unless you had testimony service, every service. Anybody ever been in those you know, churches? Yeah, I, I pastored some of them. And sometimes you'd hear good testimonies, and sometimes you'd hear testimonies that almost make your toes curl underneath, especially if you had visitors. I mean, you would hear some terrible testimonies, but some would testify when they had trouble how Jesus came running. They would tell how Jesus healed them. How they got that check in the mail. They told how Jesus come to the rescue. And some seem to always have a testimony of victory. But now since there's nobody here this morning but just you and I. 
I'm going to tell you the truth. There have been times when I needed Jesus. I needed him to come immediately. I sent the message to him that I needed him. I, I even dialed up 911 and said, it's an emergency. And Lord, I'm going to put a time limit on you. I've got to have an answer by morning. And morning would come and there would be nothing but silence. Now, I don't want to mess up your mind. I'm Brother Don Rich in person this morning. I'm the holiness preacher. I'm the camp meeting preacher. But I've got to tell you, there's been times when I've prayed earnestly. I mean, I've cried and wept, got loud and then got silent and then got loud again and prayed for Jesus to come and daylight would come and he wasn't there. Mm. Oh, go ahead and act super spiritual. Like he prayed, and just when you prayed, he just came running every time you ever called. Just act like you've got God like a, a puppet on a string. And every time you've got a little need, you run to him. And God, you must come here. You must come there. I'm going to tell you, I know better than that. God has his own schedule. And he teaches us that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Then shall they mount upon wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. He he doesn't come running every time we call out. If he would have came running, this story I'm preaching about today would read much different. Some folks want to act like they're super spiritual, like they always got an answer. Anybody beside me ever pray, seek God, and you're still waiting for that answer? Mm. Sister Rich will tell you there have been times when I've laid on the floor all night long, not just part of the night, all night long, get to the place where all I could do was just groan. Couldn't even pray, just groan. Some of those petitions, I'm still waiting for the Lord to hear. So Jesus got the message we read in verse 6 in our text. It says, and when Jesus had heard therefore that he was sick, but let us back up. To verse 5 and look in our Bibles it says now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus and when he heard therefore that Lazarus was sick if you had never read this story before you would think it's going to say now Jesus loved Lazarus and Mary and Martha and when he heard that Lazarus was sick he dropped everything and hurried to where Lazarus and Martha and Mary was at you think he made double time. You would think it's going to say that uh, he rushed to where they were at. But instead it says, now Jesus loved Lazarus and Martha and her sister. And when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed away. Well, is that what your Bible says? He loved them, so he stayed away. He didn't come when they called him. He stayed away. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. He abode two days still in the same place. And the Bible says he loved them. Sound like mama when I was just a little boy. I'd get in trouble. I one of them old-fashioned mamas. Brother over here taught the Sunday school class. Boy, she would love, she'd have been on her feet this morning when he was teaching on it, correcting those children, because she believed in that. We had an old peach tree out there behind the house, and you could, when I was little, I, it got where I couldn't even reach the limbs, because she'd broke off so many of them, used them on me, and my brother, and my sisters. Yes, yeah, sisters. When we get in trouble, sometimes you'd say, Don, go get a switch. Well, I found out. Really bad if you bring in one about that long because then she goes and gets it herself. Brother, she gets a switch. So I learned to get about a medium size. Come in, and she'd make me stand right in front of her. I can still see her now even though she's dead with the Lord. But see her standing with those fingers going down that switch. Now look at me, son. And you were in trouble if you looked out that window. She said, you mean there's something more important going on over there? Then it's more important than your mama talking to you? 
He didn't dare say no, no uh-huh, or yeah. Yes, ma'am, or no, ma'am. No, ma'am, there's nothing more important. Now, son, something you've got to understand, and all the time now she's getting ready to burn my hide. She says, you've got to understand something here this morning, or this afternoon, wherever it might be. I'm using this switch on you because I love you. Boy, my little old mind, I said, now, Mama, if you really love me, won't you give me a cookie or a biscuit, right back then, biscuit and butter and syrup on it. Won't you give me something like that if you really love me? Won't you give me something like that? And here she's getting ready to use that switch on me. And she says, you got to understand that I'm doing this because I love you. Then she said something that really blew my mind. She said, this is going to hurt me more than it's going to hurt you. But 25 years later, when a lot of the young men I grew up with was in the penitentiary, when some of them had been married two or three times, when some of them were alcoholics and dope addicts, and I was behind this sacred desk uh, preaching the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ, I understand now, Mama really did love me. Go ahead and go with your lesson today. Well... Martha and Mary had sent for Jesus. How many times they looked up that road expecting Jesus to come, I do not know. But I do know that Jesus stayed away. He stayed away until death came. Mary was sure if Jesus was standing there with his feet in the threshold of the door, death couldn't get in. But Jesus stayed away and death came came into that house oh uh, yes and Lazarus felt the cold dingy fingers of death as they took his life away and Jesus the all compassionate Savior was not there mm. then after he was dead they wrapped him in grave clothes they took their petition wrapped it up and buried it I thought all hope was gone. I'm wondering if some of you have wrapped up your petition. You quit praying because Jesus didn't come when you wanted him to come. So he just put that petition away and buried it somewhere. Well, they wrapped up Lazarus, took him out to the graveyard. And they thought, well, maybe at least Jesus will be here and he can go with us to the funeral. But the day of the funeral came. And Mary and Martha had to go to the graveyard without Jesus. They put Lazarus in the grave and finally returned it home feeling sad and downhearted. It seemed that Jesus had let them down. Now, Jesus is my representative in heaven. You know how I make it? I keep me a glorified attorney up there on the job all the time interceding for me. But uh, he's my representative in heaven, and I'm very well pleased with the way he's doing things for me up there. But I'm his representative down here. Sometimes I fail. Now, I don't want to bring any reflection at all upon Jesus. But it's hard for me to understand he got the message that Lazarus was sick. If he knows all things, he knew that Lazarus died, and yet he stayed away. There was nothing I can read in this book that hindered him in coming. He wasn't attending a wedding feast in Cana. The Bible does not record him working any miracles. No one interfered with his coming. He just didn't come. And the funeral is over. And Mary and Martha's now grieving. But after four days, somebody goes out and looks up that dusty road. Runs in with a message. Jesus is coming. When Martha heard that, the Bible said when Martha heard it, she ran to meet him. But you know what Mary did? She sat still in the house, maybe a little miffed, saying, no use of him coming now. It's too late. Lazarus, our brother's already dead. He's in the grave. Let me tell you something. Sometimes we let facts of our everyday life 
blind our eyes to the miracle working power of the Lord Jesus Christ it's never too late for Jesus to do something in your life did you hear me it's never 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 too late listen no use getting excited now Mary's probably thinking my brother's already dead but when Martha came to Jesus she said Lord if you would have been here my brother would not have died now out of Don Rich's commentary I can see Jesus saying uh, Martha I just want to tell you something I don't set my watch by your clock uh, your clock says I'm four days late my watch says I'm right on time Amen. Your clock says, uh, Amen, that it's at midnight because it's dark in your life. But my watch says uh, it's high noon. You say I'm late, uh, but I came just on time. Go call your sister Mary. And somebody went in and said, the master's come and he calls for you. And here comes Mary and she made the same comment. She said, Lord, if you'd have been here, our brother had not died. And I can hear Jesus say, well, the reason I stayed away, I just loved you so much. I loved you so much. That's why I stayed away. I've set you and Martha up for the greatest miracle you'll ever see in your life if I'd have came when you wanted me to come you'd have knew I was a healer but then and then only you would have believed that I could heal the sick but you must remember if in this life only you have hope in Christ you'll be of all men most miserable your brother's gonna rise again for I am the resurrection and the life I've set you up so you'll know that I'm more than just someone that helps you in this life but I am the eternal life giver tell me where you've laid him show me where you came to your extremity show me when you had gone as far and where you had gone as far as you've gone take it can go take me to where you laid him they took him to a grave a sepulcher and a stone lay at the door and Jesus said, take ye away the stone. Well, we could preach another hour right there because a lot of people have a hard time moving the stone. Now, they were the one that put the stone there, so they had to take it away. Jesus was not going to use his supernatural power to move something they had put in the way of him giving life, giving strength to Lazarus. So they roll the stone away and Jesus started up to that tomb, that sepulcher, and Martha said, Now, Lord, I'm trying to tell you, he's been dead four days, and he stinketh. You're late, Lord. You're four days late. But he said, Did not I say unto you, If thou wouldest believe, thou shalt see the glory of God. Then he stood at the door of that sepulcher, lifted his voice, and cried, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came out of that grave bound in grave clothes and a napkin about his face. And Jesus said, loose him and let him go. Those of you who's had a petition before the Lord, don't give up now. I said, don't give up now. Oh, don't give up now. Hold on just a little longer. Now, I've never heard no preacher, I've never read in no commentary where anyone has ever elaborated on this subject I'm getting ready to mention about Lazarus. He had been dead four days. So I might ask the Bible teacher over here, where was he at? What was he doing those four days that he was dead? You ever hear anybody preach on that? I've never heard nobody preach on it. Where was he at? What was he doing? Four days he'd been dead. Oh, four days now he'd been dead. Life had gone from his body. He was in a tomb. Oh, yes, he did come back to life. And Martha, 
uh, had to say and Mary had to say Lord we thought you was late but we see now you loved us enough that you came late because they realized he had resurrecting power but since I never heard nobody preach about Lazarus and those four days that he was dead and since these preachers have never heard and probably most of you maybe all of you have never heard it's all right I use a little of my commentary in it well I'm just wondering if somewhere down there in paradise Lazarus had met up with Moses pull up beside of him and say hey Moses aren't you the one that brought the children of Israel out of the Red Sea tell me about it across the Red Sea out of Egypt's bondage and across the Red Sea tell me about it and Moses begins to tell him that story of how he brought the children of Israel out of Egypt how they came to the Red Sea and about the time he's telling Lazarus that he's getting ready to lift his uh, rod and God, at the command of God Lazarus hears a voice and that voice says Lazarus come forth and I can see Lazarus turn to Moses said you're going to have to finish this story some other time there's a voice that's calling me that's more powerful than the clutch and the grip that death has upon me this voice that's calling me has the commanding power even over death see you later Moses as he leaves out and comes back and in 12 2 of John Jesus is sitting at a table with a feast guess who's sitting there at that table with Jesus at the feast table it is Lazarus and I can see Mary and Martha's friends say we heard you that Jesus loves you but we also heard that he stayed away four days after he died we need an explanation say, well look in there at that table who's sitting in there eating with Jesus well explain it to us Mary explain it to us Martha he just loved us so much that he came late. You may not always understand why it's been so long, but the Lord, he knows what he's doing. He knows his appointed time. Oh, he has an hour when he can work for you. If God has given you a vision or a dream and you know it was from God, now not because you ate too much sauerkraut and Polish sausage, but because God gave you a dream or a vision and you know it was from God, don't let no one steal your dream. For sooner or later, the Lord's going to come through. Sooner or later, the Lord's going to work. Whenever my grandfather was lying on the bed dying, he called all of his children in and had each one of them to promise that they would meet him on the other side. And then he had the confirmation that they would meet him. My dad was not saved at that time. Bill, my brother, got saved shortly started preaching my dad was still not a Christian but one night my brother was preaching in the church and my father was there and he just couldn't take it any longer uh, with my brother preaching he got up and gave his heart to the Lord that made one boy another son came in a little later and was saved then my uncle Earl full of emphysema and dying on his deathbed looked like that confirmation would not come to pass but on his deathbed, Assembly of God preacher came in to talk to him about his soul. And old time conviction got a hold of his heart. And in the last days of his life, he testified with a clear-cut testimony that Jesus had saved him from his sins. If you have a vision, if you have a petition, if you sit for Jesus to come, don't you give up. The Lord may not come when you want him to, but just like Mary and Martha heard that Jesus was coming down that street, one of these days you're going to look down your old dusty road and here will come that miracle working man and here will come that one that says nothing is too hard for me all things are possible to them that believe all power is given to him and it's in his hands you just hold on oh yes sometimes he loves you so much 
and he comes late. Oh, glory. And now I'm starting to feel like preaching and it's time to quit. But I'm telling you, he doesn't always come. When my son Leon, right now he's making one of the greatest preachers. Hoping he can come with me to the homecoming this year. But he's making one of the greatest preachers. But oh, when he got married, you talk about a machine. I mean, he's making a preaching machine. A Holy Ghost machine, that is. Got to have a Holy Ghost oil to run this machine. Anyhow, he's making a great preacher. But oh, he broke my heart. We never, don't nobody fall out with me, but we do have a hole in this home. We never let television come in there. My children, as much as I love them, now strangers we make exceptions to, but my children, they, my girls, they don't come in my door. If, I only have one that wears them, but if they're wearing Levi's or shorts or whatever, they don't come into the door. We got a hole in this home there. Oh, don't quit me. So we never had a television in our home. But when Leon got married, he thought he'd missed out on something. So he got him a television out on his own. Started doing some things he shouldn't do. I was laying there one night. I just came in from a mission trip. And I was laying there on my bed. And God dealt with me to get up and pray. I went to the living room and started praying with a broken heart. Trying to seek God. And uh, my wife came in and she prayed with me till 2 o'clock in the morning. And as we were praying and seeking God, she stayed to about 2 and she went on to bed. And I was still praying, seeking the Lord, trying to get a hold of God. And along about 3.30 or 4 o'clock in the morning, God just dealt with me to reach over and get this old black back Bible. I opened it up and here's what it said. He said, my spirit that I have put upon thee and my words that which I have put in thy mouth shall not depart out of thy mouth nor out of the mouth of thy seed nor out of the mouth of thy seed seed forever oh and I said Lord that's for me that's for me so I got up and I spent the rest of the day or the rest of the night out in the behind the house in the little old pasture I had just walking around praising God well it didn't happen the next day nor the next but I came in one day from a mission trip and we always have a big dinner sister Collins when I, when I come home all my family get together and all my children and grandchildren and we put on one of them old time Oklahoma feeds and everybody enjoys it. Well, on this particular night I just came in late from the airport. The families had gathered at the home and I looked around. There's Leon's wife and there's all the rest of my family. And I've got three daughters but I only have one son. I said, now where's my son? Here's your three daughters. Yeah, I see all of them, but I want to see my son. And Shauna, my sister-in-law, she said, Leon won't be here tonight. I said, what? I said, no. I said, he shut himself away in prayer. This is his fourth day of fasting and prayer. I said, not to bother him unless it's an entirely an emergency. Don't bother him. Don't call him. Nothing. He's praying and fasting. I said, Leon? Fasting, Leon, praying. So we wait without him. A couple days later, I got a call. It was Leon. He said, Dad, could you bring your pickup truck? I said, yeah. What do you need, son? He said, I want you to help me get the television out of the house. So I'm going to start preaching the gospel. I'm going to preach it just like you've always preached it. And then God said, Remember when I told you my spirit, which I have put upon thee, and my words, which I put in thy mouth, 
shall not depart out of thy mouth, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, seed forever. As long as there's anybody on this planet with Don Rich's blood flowing through their veins, this gospel message that I preach will still be going forward in holiness and righteousness and purity. He may not come when you want him to come, but he'll be there right on time. Hold on. How many of unsaved children? Let's see your hands. How many have unsaved husband? How many have unsaved wife? All right. My brother had a woman in his church. She had an unsaved husband. Lived with him 38 years. She said she was praying in her kitchen. I don't have no reason to doubt her. Someone doubt her. So I was doing my work in my kitchen. I was praying and said, the Lord came down to me. Well, he does condescend. I know it's about a minute till 12. Uh, he does condescend to them that are of low estate. Oh, yeah, he resisted the proud, but he gave a grace to the humble. And he gives grace to the humble. She came into the church and said, The Lord came down to me and told me my husband going to get saved. Everybody's expecting him to get saved, you know, next day, next week, the next month. Didn't happen. They begin to think, well, the old sister been praying 38 years and she's just sort of fantasizing. But my brother was up preaching in his church one Sunday morning. The door opened, an old man on a crutch slipped into the door, them sliding doors. He did not stop back there in the pew even though my brother was preaching. He did not stop anywhere. He just kept coming to the front. Walked right down and stood right in front of my brother. And my brother stopped preaching. He said, could we help you? Thought maybe there was uh, some kind of emergency. And I guess there was. He said, yes, you can. Said, 38 years. I've heard that woman praying for me to get saved. 38 years. I've heard her praying, Lord, save my husband. And he said, I realized that the Lord gave her the confirmation that I would be saved. Said, I was sitting over there thinking, if I'm, I'm getting old and feeble, if I'm going to get saved, I better get saved. And that's why I'm here, preacher. I'm here to get my heart to God hey sometimes he loves you so much he comes late and now I know it's two minutes after 12 hallelujah I'm getting ready to close but how long are you willing to wait on him they that wait on the Lord they shall mount up on wings as eagles they shall run and not be weary they shall walk and not faint. Oh, Mary, Martha, let's hear your testimony. Well, we understand now why Jesus stayed away. If he'd have came, we'd have went around telling everybody he's a healer. But now we are first-hand witnesses. And we can say to every man, woman, boy, and girl who puts their loved ones down in the grave that truly Jesus is the resurrection and the life. For we've done seen His power. When He cried out, Lazarus, come forth! We saw our brother we saw our brother come out of that grave. And we believe when He descends from heaven with a shout and with the voice of an archangel and with the trump of God, all the dead in Christ will rise because He is the resurrection and the life. Would you stand with me, please? Sorry, I preached a little over 12 o'clock. You say, well, my roast is going to burn. It's better for your roast to burn than your soul to burn. Hallelujah. You need to hear the gospel. You need to know that Jesus has his own calendar. They tried to put a lot of fear in people's hearts on this turn of the century. Man, it never did phase me one bit. One guy called me and said, 
How bad does that affect you? And I said, not like pouring me another cup of coffee. And I'm not scared of Y2K. I'm not afraid of anything this world has to offer. Oh, because the Lord has it all in His hands. Are you ready? How about you, sinner? Jesus could have came already. But could it be that He just loved you so much that He's still waiting for you to get saved today? Could I see a hand to somebody? Say, preacher, please remember me in prayer. I need to be saved. Would you raise that hand quickly? Anywhere, anyone? I feel the Holy Ghost in this place, Brother Collins. It's here, right here, right now. Would you lift your hand and say, Preacher, pray for me. I know that I'm not saved, but I want to be saved. Would you lift your hand quickly right now while I wait just a moment. There's sinners here. I'm sure there's backsliders here. You could have been cut off, you know. You could have been one of those that what was wiped out last night in a wreck or accident, but He loved you so much. He allowed you to come here this morning. Could I... Can't you see how much He loves you? Can you remember a close call that you had? And He just loved you so much. He kept you from going into hell. And you're here today with a right mind. Say, Preacher, please pray for me. I want to be saved. Just raise that hand quickly and put it right back down again. Oh... He said, why I preach a lot in foreign countries and house would have emptied out of every sinner just about today. Hallelujah. I'm wondering if there's one who just raised your hand. All right, I want to see the hands of those. You say, I've had a petition before the Lord one year and I still don't have an answer. Could I see your hand? How many would raise your hand and say, I've had a petition before the Lord five years? And I still no heaven. How many could say I've had a petition before the Lord ten years? And I still don't have an answer to that petition. Yes, God see in those hands. How many could say I've had a petition before the Lord over ten years? And I still don't have an answer. God see those hands. Did it ever occur to you? That He might just love you so much that He's wanting to do something greater in your life. Oh yes. Many, sometimes God has checked me from going to certain villages to preach and I know they need the gospel. God say, don't go. And then later on, God would say, go. And when I get there, there will be a certain instant, instant incident that it happened, that it opened up the village for the gospel of Jesus Christ. God knows. Oh, I don't know what to do with this service, Brother Collins. I feel the Holy Ghost here. I hate to see you leave. How many's going to keep holding on? I said, how many's going to keep calling? Calling. Calling on Him. Brother Shoecraft and I was in Switzerland. I don't know why God don't always work like this. I don't understand it. But Brother Collins, we had miracles rolling off our fingertips like honey. Seemed like everybody we'd touch would be healed. They brought a woman that was stone deaf. They'd been praying for her for a long time. We didn't do nothing unusual and just anoint her with awe. In the name of the Lord. Immediately her ears were opened. Now why did God wait so long? 
Talk to him about it. He has his own schedule. I do know why he waited so long about the little girl that he healed with sugar diabetes. Her parents brought her. She about 12 years old. They brought her to me for prayer. Said she has, I forget how high the count, way up there in the hundreds. She has to take two shots a day and eat. You have to, when you do that, you have to just almost be eating constantly. I don't understand it. Somebody medical might know more about it. She has to just keep eating. And we brought her up there. I just anointed her and prayed for her. And the mother of the child received confirmation that her child was healed. I didn't feel nothing. She said, now, so they came to me and said, now, Brother Rich, the father, mother, and child, said, I've received confirmation that my child is healed. Now, should we keep giving her shots of insulin? Or should we pull back the shots? Now, you know you can go into a coma and die. And then the Lord sometimes even gives old men like me that don't know much some wisdom. I said, where do you get her medication? They told me. Right up close by there. I said, she has a local doctor here? And they said, yes. We have to take her in every week and have her blood sugar checked. I said, well, if God really did it, God's work will stand up against the scrutiny of medical science. Take her on up there. Took her up there and had her checked out. Blood count normal. Still normal. And that doctor now is coming to that church. He's not saved yet. But God's going to save him. Oh, God waits. We don't understand it. Do you understand what I'm preaching? Have I made myself clear? Oh, yes. God's wanting to confirm something in your heart. That he will do what he says he will do. Now, Brother Collins, the honest man, he might tell me, now, Brother Rich, I will meet you down in Cincinnati tomorrow at a certain place. He means to be there. But circumstances could stop you. But when God tells you, whew, you rest on it. The sun may not shine. The moon and the stars may fall out of the constellations up there. But God's Word will come to pass. I want those that's been praying for your lost loved ones to come right now. Right now. Well, I could tell the young people something. How I know young girls and young boys that's waited on God until God sent them the companion they were supposed to have. And I can tell you stories of those that got in a hurry and wouldn't wait on God and their life ended up in disaster. Don't be closed out of the family circle. If you're here and you're lost and your companion's up here or your mom or dad's up here and you're not saved, why don't you just come on and join them right now? Fulfill this. My, my. Man, it's something when God starts working in hearts and confirming His Word. You can feel Him. No, it's not emotion. It's not Brother Don Rich. It's God wanting to do something in your heart, in your soul. Now, you don't have to have an answer today from God if you can have reconfirmation today. That's all you got to have. You can hold on to it. Oh. Hallelujah. Woo. A man prophesied over me. A man that there's questions about. Prophesied over my wife. She'll tell you the prophecy came to pass just like she said. But he told me in that same meeting, he said... There'll be a day 
when you'll work miracles. I've never seen many miracles in my ministry. I waited, and now I'm seeing miracles. Wouldn't surprise me what God might do right here this weekend while I'm right, right here with you this weekend. Hallelujah. It's not me. It's God. Oh, hallelujah. Let's look to the Lamb right now together. Why don't you join somebody by hand and say, let's believe God. Could you do it? Just take somebody's hand. Say, let's believe God. Let's believe God. No one heard my cries, my broken sweet my baby. Converted your word. Converted your word. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Converted your word. Converted your word. Gently slipped in the blood. Come on, brother, in the blood. Converted your word, Jesus. Just converted your word, oh God. If you said it, if you had to pass, and rocked oh. my soul to sleep, just before Lord, if you said it, it will come to pass. You promised it, Jesus. It will happen. Hallelujah. 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 Believe him. And I thank God. Stand on it. Wait on the promise. Just Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wait. Now I say to remember the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Oh, Son of God. In Jesus' name. So he said he's good. He'll do it. Now storms may oh, no exception. Minister Jesus. When I sure have oh, mine, but I thank God he found me. Hallelujah. Just oh, in time. Do the work. Oh, just see for the way to slumber Hold up my soul oh, to sleep oh, Just Jesus. before the angry belongs Had pulled me out to deep God knows how long I drifted When I saw the old that light but I thank God He found me just in time. I was going down for the last time. No one heard my cry. My voice was sweetly faint. Drifted with the night. If he when I heard it to you. from out oh, of nowhere, yes, I fail you. gently slipped in by, and I thank God, God, God he found me. In Jesus' name, just in Jesus' name, time. Oh, come on. just before the waves of slumber had rocked my soul to sleep. Just before the angry billows had pulled me out to deep. God knows how long I drifted when I saw the old last line. I thank God he told me just in time. Now I don't remember drifting His pleasure on with me When careless winds start blowing You drift so easily Now storms make no exception For when I should have mine And I thank God He found me Oh yes just in time. Just in time. Just before the waves of slumber and rock my soul. Oh, hallelujah. Seek the Lord. Seek the Lord. Believe the Lord. And pull me out to deep. Oh, the 
Come on, church, let's Bring worship him. Let's yeah. believe him that he's going to do what he said. Let's yeah. believe that he's going to work in our midst in a greater way. Let's believe that he's going to bring it to pass. He's spoken and he will bring it to pass. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, believe him, believe him, believe him. Oh, hallelujah. I saw the old earth line, and I thank God he found me. Just in time. Of Samaria. Then the Lord, then the Lord.